And for the sake of this tutorial, I have already edited this photo. Now we see all these scene refer default ones. They are here before you start. And then I went to the Filmic RGB, changed some things. I changed something in the color balance, actually the saturation and some brightness. I've added the local contrast. I've added a low pass filter. Today we are going to talk about noise in Darktable. Now I uh, realize this is a very shitty image, but please stick with me because we need an image like this to explain the noise reduction in Darktable. And now I'm going to zoom in in the image and I see all this noise. Oh my God, this is horrible. This is horrible. I can't use this image, but Darktable has got some great tools, which I'm going to show you. So we are looking for denoise. So you have to fill it in here because if you don't, you won't see the modules that have to do with this. Uh, in this case, we got the Astro Photo Denoise, Service Blur, Denoise Profile, Draw, Denoise. And we are going to use this one. But before I do, let me explain you something about noise. Right, so let's talk about what noise is, right? Imagine taking your photo in low light like I did here. And then you notice it looks grainy and speckled. Well, that's called noise. It's essentially a visual distortion that can make your images look less sharper, even a little bit fuzzy. You know, there are mainly two types of noise you'll encounter. The first one is luminance noise, which affects the brightness of your photo's pixels, making it look uh, grainy and black and white. And then we've got color noise, which you see here as well, which introduces random splashes of color, making the image look speckled. Now, Darktable offers different types of tools to deal with the noise in the image, as you can see over here. But remember that it's always best to get your settings right rather than fixing it in post, which means that you should use the lowest ISO possible or at least stick to the native ISOs from your camera as much as possible. So that means uh, you should always try to shoot in the best lighting conditions possible. If there's no natural light for you, then make sure you use a flash, which I didn't over here, or use some artificial light, which I didn't bring here as well. So now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to fix some noise. And let me start by saying that this, what we're going to do is very, very old school, right? Because there are a lot of great AI tools, a Topaz Denoise AI, for instance, that's the one I think, uh, which work great to denoise your image. Some are free, some cost money dark table is free obviously so i'm going to show you how to do this manually but always remember there's a quicker way to do this so the first module that we're going to use is the denoise profiled module and the reason for that is because it's the most simple one all you need to do is make sure that the mode is set to wavelets and then just boop activate it and you see that the noise already started to disappear now what's good to know is that this module addresses the chroma noise in your image right now the strength slider here should be used in moderation because if you move it to the right making this a lot more stronger you see that we lose a lot of detail in this image but if we go to the left side we see the noise appearing here again so let me reset that by double clicking so there's always need to tweak this to make it look good but without actually losing your image. And the Preserve Shadows one, that's actually a very interesting slider as well for me because it's basically like the chicken and egg story, right? Usually dark parts of your image contain a lot of noise and this slider determines how much the shadows will be preserved, meaning that it will determine how much noise there will be. Now, the bias correction one, that's the last or final slider in this module, acts as a U slider, even though it's not. If you move this to the left, for instance, uh, you will see greens starting to appear in the shadows. And if you move it to the right, you will start to see reds in the shadows. So I'm going to leave this to default. And then we're going to move on to the next module. Now, like I said, fill in the noise here. But oh no, we are missing a module that I'm looking for. So in this case, we need the contrast equalizer module because we can and denoise here as well. Now, what's good to know about this module is that it has a couple of presets, right? So we've got bloom, clarity, blah, blah, blah. We've got denoise and denoise and sharpen. So you can denoise the image and then, you know, we start to lose the image, but you can also decide to denoise and sharpen it, which gives this image a different effect. So once again, let me show you that again. So here's the denoise only which makes it soft. And then we've got denoise and sharpen, which makes it very sharp. Now, if you don't like how this looks, you can either uh, make this like 0.5 to give it half the effect, or what you can do is you can go here and then change the opacity to 50%. And by the way, I'm doing this by clicking the right mouse button. And then we get the same effect, right? Let me reset that real quick. And just know that this module is trying to balance out the image, right? So like I said, we have Luma and Chroma noise. And in this case, we will be needing the Chroma tab. So if the denoise didn't do a proper job, so the denoise module, we can move the rightest three points of here downwards. So let's drag these three points downwards. 
there you go now the image has got some more denoise in them and just now that one module doesn't exclude the other right so make sure to not use either one of them but jointly together then the one thing I wanted to show you, the final thing is the Luma tab. But instead of doing it here, we need to create a new instance. And that's actually one of the reasons why Darktable has new instances. Because you can stack certain things. Uh, let's say you want different masks and stuff. You can use the new instance or duplicate instance for that as well. So new instance, we're going to use the Luma tab. And then we see these dots here as well. And we're going to drag these down just as much. And that will smooth out the image even more but it's very important to prevent your image from going bust and one of the things you could do because this basically has a couple of things we've got something in the foreground and we have something in the background is we could draw a mask around here yeah and then this will be excluded if we invert the mask so let's say we're going here i'm just going to show you that real quick i'm going to draw a mask around it there we go, now we've got a mask and I'm going to invert that mask. And now everything is affected except what is inside this mask, right? So here's a before, you see a lot more noise coming back and then see an after. You see that only this is being affected and not this image, right? So that's so this is the best way to denoise your images in Darktable. I'll see you guys next time. Doei.